Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another edition of the Big East Rewind. I am Chuck Everson, your seven-foot host from Villanova University, and my partner, as always, the good dentist from Syracuse, Dr. Sonny Sparrow. How are you, Sonny? I'm great, Chuck. I am really excited. I know we have talked about this, and we have tried to set this up for a good year and a half. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, here, coach so. has got coach has got moves like a guard, Sonny, like the rest of the Hoyas. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> unbelievable. You, he's elusive, man. I got to say, I, it's, I had uh, to move things around. I, I had to, like, I we, we had to put the schedule. full court trap on, like the oh, Georgetown yeah, defense of old. We had to full court press him. So. Good for a big guy. Good for a big yeah, guy. Exactly right. My thinking exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all of that said, Sonny, I hope you're done with your Hoya paranoia because it's years ago now. That stuff has got to go away. We got we got the head Hoya with us today, Sonny. So yes, we do. as our guest today on the Big East Rewind, the former coach of Providence and, and Fairfield, he started at Fairfield for a lot of years and Providence and took them from a 500 club to a Sweet 16 club and their first regular season uh, Big East championship mm-hmm. and now is in charge of the storied franchise of the georgetown hoyas the head hoyer himself coach ed cooley how are you coach thanks for joining us thanks a lot doing amazing excited to be on i'm sorry it took so long but as you know when uh when reestablishing and redeveloping and you know mm-hmm. trying to come to you know trying to come to the table with it with a good team it's just taking us some some time to uh get some of these guys in here so just excited to be on and appreciate the opportunity to share some thoughts with you yeah, I mean, you know, how's it going? I mean, the first year you come in, you got big, big shoes to fill, you know, between between Coach Thompson's legacy and his big shadow. And, of course, you know, the uh, Patrick Ewing coming out and, and his reputation there as a as an, uh, a player. You know, what was that like for you coming in there um, for year one? Well, truly, the Big East, I love the Big East. It is is an incredible league. It has incredible history, the tradition of it. Uh, you know, I was born and raised on the Big East. I think I'm going into year 20, I think 23 or 24, being part of the Big East as an assistant coach and head coach. Yeah. Obviously, a lifelong lover of the Big East being from Rhode Island. Obviously, it was an overwhelming experience. Overwhelming experience. You do, you feel big coach every day when you walk into the Thompson Athletic Center, when you walk through McDonough, when you walk on the hilltop, you feel his presence and aura. Uh, You feel Patrick's aura and all the former players that were here. And saying that, it's just a new time, a new era, a new place in college basketball. And as much as we love to talk about the past, I think we have to move forward. We have to respect tradition and legacy of it. But it's just a different time now. You know, again, we we didn't have the the greatest of greatest years as, as we're trying to reestablish Georgetown uh but little by little I feel we've made incredible incredible strides uh incredible gains and uh meeting the people here I'm excited about this opportunity well they're, yeah. they're gonna take on your personality right and so it takes it takes a little bit of time to make that happen the one thing that I, I I I've heard and it's really exciting to hear is that you bring that that family of uh, alumni come back be a part of this very open arms and it's it's just really great to hear and see talk about some of the things that you wanted to put in like just putting your you know your stamp or your signature in there a little bit well you know some transparency you know i think hoya paranoia was real and is real. Yeah, it was <laughs> i mean obviously you guys know much better than me which played against it but i think given that time and era where we were in society right i think much of, I think much of it was needed you know, when you're predominantly uh, uh, a minority African American males on predominantly white Catholic college institutions, you know, we were different. I mean, you know, life this this wasn't the norm. And 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 how do you protect men and women who are different in in, in that era? And as time yeah. changed, I don't think the philosophy changed. And my philosophy, not that it was right or wrong, just was a different time. So. My my leadership style is to make everyone feel like they're part of the whole inclusive transparency, vulnerability, um, given the world of NIL, given the world of transfers, given everything that has changed in this landscape. I don't think you can go backwards with that type of uh, philosophy. Right. 
Like, yeah. again, in particular with your former players, I mean, they, they need to feel like when they come here, it's their school. I just happen to be the captain that's directing the ship right now, but it's their legacy, their tradition. That's what's made this place so special. That's everything I hear. I mean, it's it's really exciting. Yeah. As, as we, a guy whose head coach was for 46 years at Syracuse, you know, there's continuity there, but not a lot of other programs have that. But to bring that back full circle is pretty cool. Yeah, we we talk a lot with the Georgetown alumni guys. You know, you wouldn't think that an Orangeman and a Wildcat would be buddies now with all these Hoyers. But since we've been doing this, Coach, we found out there's a brotherhood amongst the players in the Big East. You sure. know, I mean, and just to, to quote you in your huddle, the Fox Sports had you in the huddle. This isn't pretty boy basketball. This is the Big East, you know, and right. it still is. It still is that <laughs> type of physical, even from when we played, how physical it was. You know, now, you know, as a fan, when you watched when you watched those games in the 80s, I know oh. I know I you know, you were a Hoya fan when you were younger. And uh, I heard from a from a re very reliable source that your favorite player was Reggie Williams. Am I right about that? Yes. Yeah. Reggie, Reggie told Reggie. me that himself. That's how Reggie I told us. That out. <laughs> Reggie had no problem telling me that you were his he was uh, dancing uh, around it. Reggie told him. <laughs> yeah. Reggie told me I got it from a reliable source. But talk about that. Like when you watched as a as a fan the physicality and everything. And now you've been in the league so many years yourself as a coach. Is there any, do you see a lot of differences? Is it still the same big East when it comes to that? Well, the rules have changed a little bit. So it's right. not as taxing uh, physicality wise. It's still one of the more physical leagues in the country. I think it's the best officiated league in the country. I think it's the most recognizable league in the country. Um, I think we're able to play in so many different media markets that allow our young men and women to get exposure. It's, if I can reflect a little bit, going back to the really early 80s, I was 13, 14, you would run home on a Saturday or big Monday to watch the Big East. You would be front and center. You just couldn't wait. For me, as a young person who always wanted to get in, basketball I thought I was going to you know be Julius Irving or I was I don't even know if I could spell Julius Irving back and let alone <laughs> play like him I aspired to be somebody like big coach because he was one of the few black coaches in America at that point in time right. that you could say you know what when I grow up I want to do that then you would see the style of play bodies flying people yelling Feheim losing his mind Louie losing his mind you know, Roley, you know, he's got, you know, he's got his tie around his neck, right? <laughs> he's yep. sweating bullets. That to me was so exciting. I mean, when you think of the legacy and history of George Georgetown, and then you say Big East, and, you, and again, I still can't believe Syracuse is not in the Big East. It, uh, trust me, you're uh, preaching to the choir. Yeah, uh, that's a sore I mean, spot. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. But anyway, I mean, that's that's for the uh, uppity ups to make. It is just Big East basketball is something that you just dream about watching. You dream about watching. And the fact that we can do it some 40 some odd years later is 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 amazing. And it's, you know, the leadership of Mike Trangisi, of, you know, of, of Dave Gavitt. And, yep. you know, and, and now Val has it, you know, has it. I'm just grateful that I've been part of it and able yeah. to talk about it, uh, let alone be employed by it. Yeah, it it it's it has had great leadership throughout the course, uh, you know, of of its forty five years. Can you believe it's a forty? It's forty five years old this year, Coach. The Big East. It's unbelievable. I'm unbelievable. But great players <laughs> and great coaches. It, it was. It's not one or the other. It was both. It's it, it's always been you know both going hand in glove with that. You know, right. when when you think of the great players that have come out of here, the great coaches, the Hall of Fame coaches. Uh, you know, both of you two obviously have Hall of Fame coaches that at your respected alma maters, and I think they really epitomize the Big East. You know yeah. what I mean? When you really think about it, you know, both have won national championships, big coach winning the national championship. I mean, that's it's a lot of synergy there. And obviously, you can't forget about Calhoun and, you know, what he was able to do to resurrect, you know, Connecticut and, you know, um, love where the league is today. I love where our league is today. Yeah, Being so do I all centric right yeah. you, you you got rick in new york doing his deal right uh it's so it's, it's an exciting time right now for biggie's basketball 
Yeah, it, you know, I think this year in particular, it got tough. I think the league was so good that we kind of ate our own a little bit by Seton Hall and St. John's not getting in the tournament. You Which know, I think at the end was BS in the end. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Uh, you know, again, you had a lot of deserving teams that got in. I don't want to take away from any coaching staff, any players that got in. You know, we we with the NCAA have to do something to to the best that we can try to pick the right teams. And we have 200 and something systems that we're trying to evolve in. I think we need a more simple recipe. And I don't know what that is. You know what I'm right. saying? I really don't. I mean, I, I take nothing away from every team that made it. They right. deserve that they got in. That's what they said. But me being totally biased and totally transparent is no way in hell you can have that level of team with Connecticut had last year and have three of the top 11 seed in the whole damn tournament and only have three teams. Yeah, it just, it seems crazy, right? No, that's unheard yeah, of. It was crazy. It, it, yeah, but anyway, that's behind us, and hopefully that don't happen again. Hopefully we get 11 teams in the tournament. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I want to ask you, like, in, 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 in today's game and, and world, what would you say are your like hallmarks? So I'm a kid, I'm coming to Georgetown, I'm coming to play for you. What are some things that you're going to tell me, hey, this is how we do things here. These are our core values. These are the things that are our can't the culture, break. Right, Sonny? Culture. Like what, what is what is it that, that you like that's your own system? I, I would say the mission statement to that is first and foremost, you're going to graduate if you're here for four years, right? We've never not coached a young man who's exhausted eligibility. They not graduate. Love it. Number two, we want to have high integrity, high character. We want to be uh, accountable. We want to compete for Big East and national championships. And third, and, and third, and to me, the most important is to have gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity to be at such a prestigious university. You know, gratitude and appreciation is the ethos of the organization. That's, you know, when, when you have a center of gratitude and have deep appreciation, I think there are olive branches that help other people. A simple thank you. Hey, how can I help you? Hey, come on in. Let me open the door for you. How are you doing? Those are things that are just easy to do just give back to humanity, in my opinion, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, and, and there's sidebars with that. You can't be soft and play for me. That ain't working. You better be, you better be damn good. But yeah. you have to have toughness, well, emotional, mental, you physical have, toughness. But you have great relationships with your players. You can see it, right? It's not, it's it's very authentic, it's real, and it's demanding. Like you said, you can't do this and play here. So how do you get that? How do you get that, communicate that? You know, I think you have to be open, honest, and direct. I have to, you have to have some vulnerability to your personality. They need to know who I am as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a provider. The coach thing is the natural, all right? You may ask my job. It's not my right. person. My person is to inspire you, to motivate you, to excel and have a relentless pursuit to greatness, right? Like, you know, a lot of people come to these high major levels to, to be pros. You know how hard it is to be a pro dog? <laughs> right? You think you're the only dude out there that wants to be a pro? Right. Like, so right. are you doing pro things every day to develop habits that can sustain when you're not good, you can come back to that habit to become great? Ah, not a lot of people are willing to give of themselves like that. In my opinion, not a lot of coaches at in America are vulnerable enough to be themselves, right? They have this mask on. To, oh, I'm the coach, and you're the player, and damn it, you're going to do what I say. Nah, you can do that anyway. But yeah. I think you can do it with love, with empathy and compassion. I always tell the guys that work with me and, and the support staff, meet them where, where they're at, meet them where they're at, and bring them to where you want them to go. Coach, you I don't know, know if I got any eligibility left, but you got me fired up, man. No, but it's the <laughs> truth. I, I'm yep. serious. No, everything you're saying – is great and it's for me having spoken to so many some of this is not communicated well and and you've made some really clear distinctions to me in how that's communicated like you talk about gratitude and you know those, those that's where it starts 
I, I don't hear that from coaches. Yeah. That's unique. I appreciate that. I, I come from, and again, coming to Georgetown was a very difficult decision for me. It was a life-changing, life-altering decision. Mm -hmm. Leave mm -hmm. home, being born and raised there, being right. the first African-American coach at Providence College, right? There were two schools I loved growing up, Georgetown and Providence, right? I, I mean, I connected to both differently, but I connected to both. To leave there to come here, but I wanted to stay in the Big East. And the biggest thing, my daughter's a graduate of this place. And I think I have an opportunity to be a better dad than I've ever been, because I think I've always been a good father. But being a dad is there for, you know, her dances and my son's outings. And I think I've been a hell of a father. Dad, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> I don't know if I was there enough, so I give my wife all the credit in the world. Why do I share that with you? Many of us go through this, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think no matter what profession you're in, I think you got to come back and say, okay, where can I settle in to, to get what I really want out of life? I want to be happy. I want to give back. I want to be a dad. I want to be a father. I want to be happy. And sometimes you got to make change to be happy. And change is hard for people. Yeah. It's just hard for people. I come back to saying this. I'll always, always, always love Providence College. How can mm -hmm. you not? I gave them, they gave me, we had each other, but sometimes change is good for everyone. Right. And it may not be a popular opinion for everyone else, but it was the best thing for Norris and Isaiah and Olivia. Yeah, that's great. So, so when people are trying to make that change, follow your gut. It's a second membrane for you, and it always takes you to a good spot. To, to follow up on what Sonny was saying about, you know, him wanting to play for you now, but, he, he, you know, he can't get up and down. He can't get in the, in the stance like he used to. But he might be able to know, shoot it. <laughs> but he could still shoot it. That's right. So with the thing is, Coach, with that, how, how challenging is it as a head coach that is built on the core values that you have that we just discussed to to build that relationship up with a new player and keep that so that they don't jump and 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 go into the portal like like it is in in the environment that it is today how difficult is that for you as a as a coach and for your staff it's really hard right now man it's i mean we have two players on the roster from last year's team that played in a game three overall wow. overall Wow. Not many schools are in and all their players for whatever reason. It's a free market. It's a free enterprise. You know, you're basically a free, everybody's one and done now. Everybody. Yeah. Right. So how, how do we, you have to retain the right guys, number one. And if you're really open and honest with them and you think it's a better situation for their life, mm -hmm. I think what a lot of our young men and women are missing, they're saying, well, coach, they pay you this, they pay you that. I'm a professional coach. I don't know if I'm a good coach, but I'm a professional coach, right? And you had to work your way toward that. To me, the bag, so to speak, everybody's after the bag, right? Yeah. The bag is in your education. It's in the people that you're meeting. It's in that network of opportunity that, yeah, 100,000, 200, 300, it sounds like a lot of money. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uncle Sam is in the back saying, <laughs> That's right. I'm going to get mine. I'm, I'm going to get mine, Yeah. right? Right. And then you have agents, they patting you on the other shoulder. I'm going to get mine. So you go from X dollar, then it's a percentage. So this financial literacy to these young men and these young women and all these athletes, are we doing the right thing? It's, it's, you can't even answer that question. It's it, because you're not going to retain all your players. Right. It's happening. No matter how much love and energy and excitement you bring to them, especially the way I'm built, if you can go, Make X dollars somewhere else. I'll be open and honest with you. It's a reason why I sent my daughter to Georgetown. It's a reason why you guys went to the schools you went to. The educational component at the end of the day is going to mean something. Yep. And who did you meet? If you're going four years and four schools, who the hell did you meet? Okay, so at the end of the day, you got a million dollars. You really don't have a million dollars, right? You don't. If you If you're smart, I'll never touch a dime of my NIL money if I was an athlete today. Now, obviously, yeah. now I'm a 55-year-old dude saying that, 
right? I'd go buy me a couple of properties, right? I always tell everybody, I tell our players, hey, if you had, if, if you had $2 million, I'm going to buy a car. I said, do you want a car or transportation? I said, while, while, while you're working, get transportation. When you're old and retired, go buy yourself a nice car. Yeah. Other than that, I'm going to be at the same spot you are with a, with a hoopty, a bullshit car, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that leads me to, you know, now you you got to recruit a certain type of kid. Now, there's, I guess there's two ways of looking at recruiting, right? In the portal, it's got to be tough to know a kid's personality unless you have a, a knowledge of the kid personally. When you go see them in high school and stuff, now – that's a little different. You can sit with the family. You can talk to them like we, like they did in the old days. But you brought in you brought in Kenny Johnson, who was an AAU guy, right from uh, from Team Takeover. He coached guys like uh, Josh Hart and and Donovan Mitchell and some of those guys. How important was that for your development going forward with the Hoyas to have a guy like Kenny, who's got a strong presence in the DMV? I think it was really important to have a DMV presence on our staff. You know, uh, we lost Ivan Thomas, who became the head coach at Hampton. You really, really proud of Ivan, who worked with me for 11 years. You know, Jeff Battle knows the Mid-Atlantic a little bit, had a lot of strong and has a lot of strong ties in North Carolina and in the, you know, Southern Virginia area. But Kenny, I've known, obviously worked at, worked at Louisville with Rick, worked for Tom Crean right. down in, in, you know, Indiana, worked at University of Rhode Island. They did a lot of great things. You know, they, they, they did a lot of great things with him. But I've known him. I've known him. And I thought adding him to the mix would give us a presence here, get me around to places, because I'm still learning how to go from L Street to K Street to 14th <laughs> Street to I right. Street, the White House to this. And like, you know, traffic's tight. But this is what we do in this era. We hire somebody, a, a consultant with profile, and we just had it it's on my desk. And this is a disc assessment. Now, it's just a tool. I know what that because, is. Because, again, we're in speed dating versus recruiting. Right. You know, four of our guys out of the portal was a speed date that we recruited in 48 hours. How, how are you going to learn about these kids? Right? Right? It, it, it's recruiting has become more transactional. Right? It's become yes. more transactional. So, you know, we have them take this behavioral report to learn as much as we can about them. And from this, you could kind of have talking points around what their around what their strength is, what their weakness is, what their core values are. And I think that's where you get to the, uh, the soul of a person, right? You can ask those deep, hey, so why are you low on your humanity? Um, why don't you open a door for people? Why don't you a sorry ass say thank you? Right. Like those things to me mean more because I got we, I, Georgetown have to do a great job in developing men. Right. But it, it also helps you with communication styles, too. Right. Some people a little more visual. Some sure. people, right. I think that's a huge component. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you don't know that until you're in right. with them. So at least having this test in front of you, you know, um, and it's not a right or wrong answer. Correct. Yep. It's just, you know, I mean, we've all taken these assessment tests, um, these disc assessments, and it just tells you who you are a little bit. Yeah. It definitely yeah, helps, great. especially in this speed dating world. I mean, it's, 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 you all would be, first of all, you guys would be billionaires if, if we had to pay you guys. You guys were great players, <laughs> right? You, you, you have some guys in a portal averaging 0. 0.4 points a game and think, hey, well, coach, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be no, you, you know, you know, they, they get on their high horse averaging a point and a half and think they're worth X. Get out of keep it. And what, what Martin said, keep it, keep it step. Keep it yeah. it, it, it's amazing. It, you know, today's youth and, and, and the kids of this generation, it's a little different than uh, <laughs> when the three of us grew up. I would say that as far as, you know, some of the things that make somebody successful that a lot of kids, want the reward without without doing the work or without doing it. and they have higher standards of themselves you know that maybe um everybody else sees so it becomes a difficult thing right it's like you get it we had we had the uh coach on we had Lavelle on from uh Binghamton and you know kid on his team is averaging 15 a game he wants to go play in the big east and make money and everything else and he gets to the big east and he doesn't get off the bench now 
now now is he happy now sitting on the bench in the big east it's 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 a whole different dynamic that i don't know how you know as an old school guy like you are coach and like sonny is i don't know how i would get used to that i mean it, it's to me, it's, it's tough and the ncaa put us in these deep waters because we did not want to change knowing it was coming right i, I love the fact that we can pay our players I love the fact that they could earn off the image and likeness. Right. But how do we, how do we do it? Right. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in a, how do we do it? Like the model right now is not sustainable. We're going to get to a revenue yeah. share. What does that look like? Are these kids going to be employees? What does that look like? Now you can become an employee. Now you have a collective bargaining agreement. You have, you have so much. And these kids don't even know who uncle Sam is. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I'm all for it. I'm happy for it. I'm happy for the families because some of these families need it. They need it. Yeah. Right? So we're in a conundrum now of of the how. Like how? Right. right. The fact that we have to ask Congress to come in tells you everything we know. How many times you want Congress coming in your backyard saying, well, can you make the rule four? Right. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Ah, Sonny, I don't know about that. I don't want Congress coming in telling me how to do something in my own household. That's rough. Right. That's rough. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it to call you. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what's interesting, though, listening to you? What you just went into with the disc is just, it's just so, it's authentic, right? I mean, you want to get to that and then you want to help young, I mean, let's just say it, young, young gentlemen become men. Yes. You know, and that's, I don't, I'm going to say that's, that's de-emphasized, but that's partially missing a little bit, but that's the authenticity that, that you, I, I just comes out of your pores. I mean, you can't, you can't help but feel it as you're speaking. At the end of the day, I didn't get into coaching. I got to, you know, can I pay my bills? I want to eat every now and then I want to go get a good meal. My favorite foods, I eat food. Like, I mean, every now and then, but I didn't get into this for the money part of it. I've always wanted to coach. I love competition. I love strategizing against what other coaches and teams do. The fact that you can give somebody an education, education changed my life, went to a small Catholic school. Like, how can you not want to do that? Like, how, like, and the fact that we do make great money, well, we've earned it. And if that's what the market says, then, well, that's what the market says. I mean, I don't yeah. control that, right? Yeah, and, and 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 I'm happy I'm doing it because we're changing lives. At right. the end of the day, not only are you changing lives, you're changing generations of life. As most of our players are first gen kids, so it's going to allow their families to say, "Oh, my mommy and daddy went to college. Maybe I can do that too." Right. That hasn't been the norm in our society, not just for African Americans or, or minorities, but for everyone. Yeah. Many of us were first gen kids that went in there and said, How the hell did I get out of Villanova? How did I get out of Syracuse? How the hell did I get out of Stonehill? You know what I mean? Right. Like, man, well, glad I did. I wasn't the brightest brother in town, but I got through. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got a, you got a tough uh, person we have to answer to. So wait, we're gonna we gotta get this wrapped up. I, I'm very uh, respectful of your time and we appreciate you coming out. All but Diane is tough, man. We had to deal with her with Patrick too, and uh, I don't want to cross her. So oh, give good. us a give us a quick expectation of. How, I know you've been on the court now a little bit yep. for practices and stuff. How do you feel about your current group of guys? How do you feel about the current squad? Well, we're probably the youngest team, one of the youngest high major teams in the country. I love our young talent. I think Jaden Epps has made a big, big leap with his leadership skills. Um, I think Mike Peavy is arguably the best defensive player in the country. Uh, you know, I would put him right up there with Justin Manaya that we coached, uh, Chris Dunn that we coached, uh, yeah. part of that we coached. Um, my expectation of this team is to continue to evolve, appreciate one another's strength rather than picking out he can't do this, he can't do that. I want to make a substantial jump, but it's not going to happen overnight. But I do see growth and development within their personalities within their habits and that's really all i could expect the league will be good i think yeah. we're uh i think we're ahead of where we were a year ago today and that's what keeps me excited it keeps me excited um the big east top to bottom will be tough right obviously you have some monsters in there but like with every game's an opportunity 
we didn't have the most talent last year. We didn't have the best team, but we were competitive in most of our games, right? And as we continue to build this, we will become an elite, elite organization, not just on the basketball court, but making it about the university. Yeah, yeah. it's called yeah, an organization. You didn't call it a basketball team. It's called a great it. answer. It's a great answer. Last one, and we'll let you go. It doesn't go on, Miss. <laughs> when, when you came, when you came in, when you left Providence and you came into Georgetown, yep. did you have a, a in your head? Did you have a plan of how many years it's going to take to to turn this around? From you know, listen, we all saw um, what happened to the program. You know, we don't have to go into details or about it, but you know, we're all we are where we are right now. Did you have a plan in your head for how many years? And are, are you on track for are you for your projection and what you thought it would be? Fair question. Um, I didn't give myself a timeline. All I ask is the opportunity to do it and let it, and let it lie where it lies, right? We're going to improve. We're going to get better. We have a veteran staff. We've been in the league for, you know, the decades. We know the coaching style. We know the arenas that we play in. So that familiarity will help me build the organization. Yeah. I'm never going to put a timeline on success because success is defined in so many different ways. Number one, we're going to graduate you. You're going to be appreciative. You're going to play hard as hell and we're going to win at an elite level. Right? So year two, year three, I don't know. All I do know is I'm excited what I'm doing. I love being the coach at Georgetown, right? I'm, I'm learning how to live in this DMV area. So I'm going to maximize this opportunity to best of, that I can right? Let it fall where it may. All I can tell you is Georgetown is improving, brother. Yeah. I and and the, and and the conference is better when Georgetown is good, I think. Right. And, and, and St. John's. Yeah. yeah I when mean, you're in the conversation, hundred percent. And, yeah. and again, we're getting there. And, and I put that pressure on myself. Right. And, um, if I got out, if I got out of the situations I was in as a kid, this here is a golden opportunity to make sure we do it the right way. I'm excited about it. Well, well coach, you, thanks so much for having us. Well. I mean, thanks so much for joining us. You know, I really uh, you know it. you're up against so I'm going to let you go. I will tell you this. We will definitely see you on the road. Sonny and I are definitely going to be at that Syracuse Georgetown game because we love that old school rivalry. So yeah, we'll make I'm, sure I'm we stop over and say hello. No, I, please come over and say hello. Please. Please. We'll I mean, do. I, are yeah. you guys going to the Big East Media Day? Will you be there? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to Media Day. Yep. So we'll hey, be back at me. Day. Please. I mean, I'd, 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 I'd love to shake your hands, man. I appreciate you guys having me on today. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank All right. You, thanks, coach. coach. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck, Best of luck to the Hoyas. Thank you. All right, pal. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye-bye. Thank you. You've been yeah. listening to the Big East Rewind you, with man. Chuck Everson and Sonny Sparrow. The Big East Rewind has been produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus, Daryl Gurney. <laughs> Check us out on all things social media by putting Big East Rewind in the search bar and also on our website at www.bigeastrewind.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks for joining us again. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everybody.